Okay, guys. Uh, support vector machine is something which is much simpler to explain graphically. So, if you remember the first example we took uh, for watermelon and apples, it was something close to this. So, I'll take the blue ones as one of the classes and the green ones as another classes. So, uh, there is let's say one line which is passing this line and keeping it as far as from this point, and there's similar line which keeps all these points as far as from those points. And there is one line which is in the middle of these three. Okay. So what support vector machine does is that th these are called as support vectors. Okay. And the distance between these two vectors. Okay. Is what we try to maximize. So we should be able to uh, differentiate between these two set of uh, points as best as the best possible way we can. Okay. And what actually happens there is that if you remember uh, earlier, whenever you studied uh, lines in geometry, uh, if this equation is y equals to mx plus c, okay, and y minus mx plus c equals to zero is uh, the equation of this line, then all the points falling in one of the cat, one of the side of the lines, will actually uh, put all uh, this particular thing equals to less than zero so all this all the points in one side of the plane will actually make this equation true and all the points on the other side will have the exact opposite effect so putting the x and y value here will give me positive values so this particular line uh, is this line the line in the middle which we are trying to draw and these two lines basically help us to put this line as far as from all these points so that it doesn't uh, make any mistake okay so what we try to do in support vector machine, and I'll not get into depth because it has a few more equation uh, which we should go through, but uh, we'll skip it at this point because you should just get the basic idea of how this works. We'll guess in, uh, discuss this in detail when we get to the uh, classification uh, course of this uh, specialization. But what you need to remember here is that these two lines need to be as uh, much as in this direction and this one in, in this direction. So I don't take, I don't uh, reduce this value. I want as big as D as possible. And in the middle, I would have this particular classifier. This is my classifier. Okay. So one of these classes will have negative values and one of these classes will have positive values. So this particular classifier is what we learn. So the output that we have for any X comma Y point. Okay. Or ideally it is actually both of these would be features. So ideally X one comma X two point is if I have X one, and I'm using x1 instead of y uh, minus m x2 uh, minus c greater than zero. It will come on one of the direction, this direction. If it is less than zero, it will come in the other direction. So just at putting the value into this particular lines equation and knowing if it is positive and negative, I can differentiate which of the classes it will fall in. Okay, and that is what uh, support vector machine is all about. Now, there's one particular thing that I have mentioned here because we don't want the data or the thing that we teach wrong, but that is something that uh, will not be able to explain at this particular point is that even nonlinear decision points, because it's not ideal that we will only have something like this. We may have uh, similar to this sort of a, a situation where the differentiators will be like this. Okay. And the line will be actually a curve. Okay. So, this is not a line definitely, but these are how the discriminators or the separators will have to be. And this will be the D. So what the concept uh, says here, uh, and this is a bit abstract, uh, the math that is there is that even long linear decision boundary, these decision boundaries may be viewed as a linear boundary in higher dimensional space. Now, how that thing comes to be true is something that will not be able to explain very well at this particular point, because that is something that is uh, coming from a very abstract perspective. You will have to study a lot of linear algebra to understand that. Uh, so, but right now you can just assume that all the classifiers, because the concept doesn't change for uh, non-linear and linear lines. Okay. Even if it is the line, even if it is a curve, only the equation or the structure of the equation change, not the concept. Okay. So just keep in mind uh, the differentiators or what do you say? The decision boundaries can be, uh, curves, but you can treat them as a line in higher dimensional space. Okay. So from the next video onwards, we will actually discuss uh, more about which of the classifiers we should use because we have studied two or three different classifier. All of them have different approaches 
one of them tries to uh, put them into positive and negative classes uh, one of them used to use uh, to build a first build a tree and then uh, classify things others used to figure out how good they are or how similar uh, or based on how similar they are to their neighbors they classify so all of them have different approaches to put a label on uh, any of the classes uh, but what we need to remember here is uh, all of them are different and their approaches need to be used based on what the scenario and situation says okay uh, just one more thing that i want to put here uh, just an idea and that is something that should actually come to you directly let's say that i have three lines uh, three classes i mean this is my red class uh, this uh, these two are my uh, this is my class 1 this is my class 2 and this is my class 3 so how will the a uh, support vector machine will be able to do multiple classes i mean is it just for two classes so in that particular case i would say no uh, for this particular thing it will have uh, multiple support vectors for example uh, it will have a support vector here okay this will be classifier 1 okay it will give me positive and negative this will be uh, my classifier 1 okay similarly i will have a classifier here this will be my classifier 2 okay uh, similarly i would have a classifier let's say for these two i'll have a classifier 3 okay now what i need to show you here is that based on the positive and negatives which i get from these three classifier i'll just redraw the classifier for you once okay uh, if i draw this this and uh, let's say this uh this is c1 positive this is c1 negative uh, sorry uh, l1 this is my line 1 positive this is my line 1 negative line 2 positive line 2 negative and which is the third line this is line 3 positive and line 2 negative so what i can tell from this is if my line 3 is positive i'll do, for a new point here i'll do one thing my line 3 is positive that means it's in this region right my line 2 is negative it means it's in this region and my line 2 is again uh, line 2 is already negative line 1 is negative so it's in this region so the overlap of all these three happens here so i can detect the location of the point in this particular region based on the positive negatives of each of the lines okay so i can use multiple lines multiple uh, decision boundaries for different classes and i can classify multiple classes using support vector machine as well okay uh, so that's all for the basic understanding of all the classifiers hope you have understand the basic difference or how exactly do they um, classify things into different categories what logic they do you use now uh, from here on uh, is the key part that is something which we have built after a lot of efforts and that is something that you will not find in other courses is that how do you choose which classifier you should use and when